What's up guys, Shane Starnes here with Joy Modder X and I've been using Apple's less expensive new iPhone, the iPhone XR, for the past couple of days and I have to say that there are a few issues that I have with this device at this price point of $800. These are my five biggest problems with the iPhone XR. Let's go ahead and get started. Problem number one is the display. Now, when I first started using the iPhone XR, I really wanted to hate the display because it's only rocking about 361 pixels per inch. This is the same amount of pixels as you could find in an iPhone 4. So this would seem that it's technology that's on par with ancient tech. In reality, Apple has done an amazing job with this display. That being said, I'm still coming from much more premium displays like the display on the Galaxy Note 9, and I've been using the display on the iPhone XS Max. Both of these displays have much higher resolutions, and you really can see a difference going from a phone like the Galaxy Note 9 to the iPhone XR. The video and image quality on this display is still superb and very sharp. The only time you're really going to notice any difference at all is in text and only when you're holding the phone about a foot away from your face. So those times when you're reading in bed, uh, those times when you're sitting on the couch and you've got the phone right there in front of you and you're reading an article, these are the times you're going to notice that lower resolution. And if you're used to phones with higher resolution, it's going to be an issue for you. The second thing that I I really didn't like about the iPhone XR is that huge obnoxious bezel. So not only does it have the notch that I'm really not fond of that we also saw in the XS and XS Max, but we also have a pretty distinctive bezel going all the way around the phone. It can even be a little bit disturbing when viewing media or when gaming. It almost feels like Apple is differentiating this device with the larger bezel. You're paying a little less money, so you're gonna get a little more bezel if you want to splurge and spend a little more money, you're gonna get less bezel with the XS Max and XS. I kind of just wish that they would have brought the smaller bezel over to this XR version. The third thing that I found really annoying with the iPhone XR is the fact that portrait mode is only good for humans. As you know, the iPhone XR has a single lens. It does not have the dual lens setup that the XS Max and XS have. And you know, you're paying the smaller amount for this phone. So you kind of expect the one lens experience. That being said, the portrait mode is totally software driven. And for whatever reason right now, you're not able to use the portrait mode on anything other than a human face. I actually tried a couple of portrait shots with my dog and the screen says that no human face is detected and it doesn't take that portrait shot. Sometimes you wanna take portraits of inanimate objects like plants or flowers and apparently you're not able to do that with the iPhone XR. Maybe that can be added in an update later on, but for now, it is kind of an annoyance. The fourth biggest issue are these aluminum sides. Now I know that Apple had to do a little bit of cost cutting to get this phone below $800, but it would have been nice to see those stainless steel sides from the XS Max and XS on the iPhone XR. And to me, the stainless steel rails on the more expensive versions of these phones is a huge selling point. It would have been nice to see that durability brought over to the iPhone XR. R. My fifth problem is the fact that the iPhone XR does not include 3D Touch. This is another way that Apple was able to cut some cost on this phone. With the iPhone XR, you do have some haptic feedback, which kind of feels similar to 3D Touch, but it is not the same thing. So with 3D Touch, when you touch the phone, the display is actually able to sense the pressure and it can do different things depending on how hard you press the display. You're not getting that functionality with the iPhone XR. Instead, you're getting a little bit of haptic feedback that is supposed to mimic 3D Touch, but it is not exactly the same. It's just another one of those cost-saving things that was done with this phone that you should know about before purchasing. Purchasing it. And for a bonus problem, the iPhone XR does not come with a fast charging brick, and it also doesn't come with a 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter, just like the XS Max and the XS. This comes as no surprise, but you would think with this being a more budget friendly option, maybe Apple would throw us a bone and give us a $50 charger and a $10 3.5 millimeter headphone jack converter out of the box that would really make this a more budget friendly device. But unsurprisingly, Apple decided not to do that for us. This phone still has a ton going for it. The display is not as bad as everyone made it out to be in the beginning. And the fact that it has all of the processing power of the XS Max and the XS make this a pretty good buy at less than $800. That about wraps it up for this video. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell as YouTube won't notify you unless you do. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.